I went to Berlin, right? So I went to the Bergheim, as you can see there from my little wristband I mentioned last um, in last episode. But I didn't really expand it or say anything more about it. But I went to Bergheim. It was absolutely amazing as per usual. I spent a little weekend in Berlin. Had had a great time, you know, chilled out, did the whole chilling out thing and, you know, scooting around the city. So what, what are my learnings of Berlin so far? Um, I'll, Specifically that... I don't think I'm ever going to go back again in the winter. <laughs> I say it every time I go, but when I come back, I'm like, hmm, maybe there's a reason why people don't, people tend to, you know, maybe there's a reason why whenever I tend to look at for apartments um, to stay in, in Berlin during the winter, I find tons. And whenever I try to look during the summer, I don't find any, right? Because usually people don't like to be at, in Berlin when it's cold. They usually leave and let the tourists come around. Like, so, you know, that's the, my general kind of thinking behind it. Um, also the city is great in the winter because you know everything's open late at night you can just go and peruse around you can kind of cruise the streets find a little cool bar to sit in find a little nice restaurant get something to eat you know talk to some strangers meet some friends whatever it may be cool whatever you want to do but I think really the beauty of that city definitely is in the summer because some of their open air parties some of their things happen in the streets happen in the parks cannot be replicated anywhere else I think if you want to you could probably replicate the club culture there a little bit if you wanted to again it's not it's not easy because some of the magic does come from stuff that's kind of intangible right the door selection policy the way they um, handle drugs and alcohol there is a bit different just the attitude towards clubbing is a bit different so there is a kind of certain panache a certain sort of sheen a certain sort of secret ingredient you can't probably replicate but what you could replicate is just the clubs right and the timing you can you can push all the clubs to be open until four make them open all around the all around london or around your city where you're based in and you can essentially copy the same sort of light, light, light life ecosystem but the one thing you can't copy is how they treat their outdoor spaces or their outside spaces right they're very um they're very keen to kind of utilize spaces that aren't being utilized you know during the summer months and just turn them into like i don't know a, a major you know open air festival or you know kind of concert thing or a, a stage show or karaoke thing, whatever it be called there's always something happening outside that you can suddenly go to for free you can grab a beer from a from a local news agent, the spat cups and stuff, and just drink and just check out what's going on, and and then through that kind of checking out what's going on, you get to connect to some people, get talking, and it always starts like that. There's always a lot of um, that's the thing. The things that you can't replicate. There's that there's that sense of um, that sense of just like things just happen by chance in Berlin a lot. Like you can just hang out there, be talking to someone in the in the in the, in the toilet queue, or between somebody at the bar, and suddenly you made a friend. Suddenly you guys are connected. Some suddenly you guys are now kind of lifelong Facebook friends, and you're just passing tunes to each other, or you're recommending stuff, or you go to another party with them. It can always it can suddenly go from like one place to another really really quickly. Um, that kind of you know, spontaneity is something you can't re replicate somewhere else. But the open air, you can't re replicate. But I reckon the best time to go is definitely the summer. I had a lot of fun this time around anyway. That that being said, I happened to go to the Bergheim. I went, uh, I didn't have, I didn't get to go to Grease Mueller. I went to go to Cocteau de la Mort, the really famous um, legendary club night that they have at Grease Mueller. But I, I didn't get a chance to go there in the end. Um, where else I intend to go to? Um, I went to quite a few places, didn't I? I remember where I went to. I went to Bergheim. Uh, I went to Co I went to Club Div no not Club Div I went to Hopstadt stuff whatever that that thing on the on the boat next to Club Division because Club Division is a bit it's kind of, it's kind of it's still I think not being renovated but I'm not sure if the advertisement it's open or not but I didn't even bother going I just went to straight to that Hop place a little boat next to Club Division there. Well, so I went to Burger Mice, I had a burger there, I went to loads of other kebab places. I did the whole round in Berlin. I, I had a great time. But Bergheim was the main place I wanted to go to. And as you can see, I have the main I have the new wristband here, right? That they've that, that was much of the debates around. I kept it on just for the podcast, right? I'm gonna take it off after I finish because it's kind of irritating my wrist. Um yeah, so the, this has been a lot of debate around this wristband, right? So it's now 18 euros to get in. I think previously it used to be like 15 euros, and now it's got sort of the date of where you went. Can you see that on the camera a little bit? Can you see that? Uh, it's got a date kind of of when I went and the price, right? So um, it used to be 15 euros, now it's 18 euros. Now they also charge a 5 euro re-entry fee to people coming in. And I think part of the reason why people were getting upset behind it, it was a little boycott that didn't really last too long. It kind of went on for about, you know, two minutes on the internet and people started to get a grip and started to realize that it wasn't that big of a deal but i think part of the reason why people are upset because they got rid of the stamps right the stamps were the kind of legendary thing about Bergheim. you go and get a stamp and it'll be something funny it might be faggot it might be some weird illustration just something quite cool right you could always kind of like you know um uh, you could always kind of date the time that you went to berlin based on the stamp that you received on your little wrist yeah 
So now the stamps are going, it's got wristbands. It kind of, you know, maybe remind you of more of a commercial club. Maybe the fact that the price has gone up. Maybe the fact that it's a five euro entry fee that was not necessarily something they did previously was free, which is something, again, that most, probably most clubs wouldn't do. I know some clubs, especially ones in London, tend to charge you a, uh, they, would rush, they would much prefer you just pay a higher entry fee for the 24 hour access as opposed to them having to recharge every time you come through the door. Right, so if it feels like a if you had to get a pass to go to warehouse project or to go to fold for twenty four hours, they'd much rather you pay thirty pounds to have an entry that allows you to go in and out anytime you want, than they're having to pay you. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Or the, what they do is that then if you did pay for a ticket that you could only get in for a particular set of time, like imagine if you got a ticket that only allows you to get in before one a.m., they'll then make sure that ticket would say in small print that there's no re-entry. Right, so they kind of locked you in that regard. But um, I think the fact that Bergheim, one of the biggest clubs in the world, allowed you to go in and out of the nightclub when you want is amazing, right? Obviously, because most of the time, most of the reason why I do it is because of health and safety, I'm assuming, right? You can't have people locked into your nightclub for four days in a row, right? From Friday night to like Monday morning, it doesn't make any sense. But I think by and large, it's just a great model because it kind of makes people want to pace themselves a lot more. So for me, I ended up sleeping the Sunday morning, no, the Saturday night. Woke up early Sunday morning, got to the Burke kind of like 6 a.m. in the morning, no queue, walked straight in, um, or had the queue for like five minutes. Um, the bouncer was super cool. Um, usually I found the bouncers, usually I, find, obviously, because everyone knows this, usually I find the bouncers that aren't Sven are usually the safest to get in with. Because when it's Sven and his crew, they are on they are on job. Like, they do not fuck around. Like, people are getting fucking rejected left, right, center, nine, 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 nine. It's all over, but everyone's getting nine. You get a nine, you get a nine, right? But when it's um the early morning crew that, that that's not that, that Sven, that isn't kind of on set, I'm sure he's somewhere around watching stuff on CCTV and stuff, but he's not at the door. It's a lot easier to get in. It's a lot more calm. I feel a lot more chill. There's a lot more banter happening. It's just a lot more, I don't know. I, I, I've always, I realize the vibe's a bit different. And also, Saturday night, Friday night is fucking peak time to go. That's when everyone, all the party people are going. And again, it probably makes sense because some people would much rather go Friday, Saturday and then leave Berlin on Sunday night, get to work on a Monday and you're all ready to go. But, you know, people like me, you know, experienced ravers, you want to go, or not experienced ravers, people that want to experience the whole thing, um, not to kind of give myself a, a hand job, but you kind of want to go Pacific, you wanna, you'd, you'd probably wanna ideally go from Saturday to Sunday. Or from Sunday to Monday, at least, just to kind of get a vibe of the place. So, I walked in at about 6 a.m. in the morning. Pretty easy to get in. It's fairly easy. Got in very calmly. Um, searched all the malarkey you could get to do. And then kind of got my, my wristband and I was able to go. But then what I realized is that I think they are offering people, if you're really um, annoyed about the stamps, they are offering you like a kind of nostalgia sort of like stamp on the wear if you want to. You can just speak to the guys in the, in the kind of desk, in the kind of ticket office, and they can give you a stamp if you want. So that's something that you can kind of alleviate that regard. But and also, I think for what it offers, you know, I really don't feel having any complaints about a re-entry fee. I didn't, I didn't go back in again. I just stayed in all, all the way until Monday morning and then left, went back to my Airbnb, slept, and then came back Tuesday morning. Um, but I, I did have an issue with it personally. Um, of course, you walk in, you hear the flipping music coming at you from all, all flipping angles. Uh, the bass just hit in your face. Um, you walk, walk up to the flipping um, cloakroom. Oh, and uh, again, a little notice about the cloakroom, right? Don't do what I did. When you get to the cloakroom, they give you a little necklace thing that you kind of, as a little, instead of a ticket chip, you get a sort of necklace thing that you then kind of give back when you want to get your stuff. Don't put that necklace around your neck. I put it around my neck and I've got some nasty rash on me. So imagine the amount of people that must have worn that necklace, right? raving or doing whatever they're doing in the dark rooms right and i decided to put that shit on my neck like don't do it i guarantee you please do not do it uh burger let's see if someone's got a cloak room necklace let's see um it's not a good thing to do it's not a necklace it's something you just put in your pocket or i don't know you put maybe around your waist or something but don't put it in your flipping thing it's, it's, a, it's a very very bad thing to do um let's see if i can get a picture of it here actually no i don't think it was got a picture of it on it but anyway um it was great had a had an awesome time. Not gonna lie, um, loads of fun was had in the Ber Berghain. I saw Crystal Clear. I saw Roxy Moore. I saw Ben Clock playing. Right, Resident. I've not seen him play at Berghain ever before. So Resident DJ playing at Berghain was amazing. Um, and just as everything about just come, now when you come to Berghain, especially when I went, I went through, um, I went another way. I don't, I don't know which way I went. Which way did I go from? From Alexander Platz? I forgot which way. I went from another end, right? But um, you kind of pass by the building works where there's kind of like a massive mud mountain where they're kind of doing some building works next to the bird kind. You kind of jump over a puddle and you kind of go through these gates that I've got here on the screens. And then um, and then you kind of approach this massive 
big flipping cubist um you know brutalist building that is the bird kind you see all these shadows in the mirror in the windows dancing and having a good time it's so fucking fun man just looking at it, it just you feel so excited that's why that's the thing I forgot I forgot to mention about Burkheim. You just you just get excited about Raven. You get excited about listening to electronic music, you get excited about techno. And usually I think for most of the time, I'm not sure about you guys, but living in London, that excitement only comes from lineups usually, right? That's why some some promoters are very hesitant about releasing set times and all that stuff because they're fearful that partners are only gonna come and see the DJs that they've booked the big headline, right? They, they, they want they want to make sure people come from like 10. They don't want you to just come at one when the big headline is going to come so they can make him a lot of money at a bar and get their returns, blah, blah, blah. But the exciting thing about those lineups is the lineups. It's not the actual club itself. You don't really care about the club, right? You're just excited about a lineup. Um, there's there's probably a handful of clubs in London that you go to that you're excited to actually go to that place and hang out, right? Um, I think even from back in the day, I can say maybe the only place that was kind of like that, it wasn't even like, it was more like a, it was a dive bar for the most part, was the Alibi, right? And that was because yeah, I, I had a kind of an affinity with it. I did some nights there. I, had, I met some good friends there. It came during a very pivotal moment in my life. You know, that age between 18 and 21. Oh, yeah, yeah, 18 and 25 where you're kind of, you know, you're still malleable and you're starting to get to know yourself and you're discovering your taste and your interest and all that stuff, Malaki. So it kind of, it, it became a bit more, but there's rarely that I go out where I'm very excited to go to a club in London. I'm also excited to go see who's playing in there. But the bird kind is the opposite of that. You're actually excited just to go inside that place. You don't care who the fuck is playing, right? So I could have been very hell-bent on making sure I came there exactly on the time that I wanted to go see a DJ. But I, I just woke up whenever I woke up. And when I woke up, I happened to come at a time when all my DJs I wanted to see were playing. But I wasn't rushing to go see someone play, rushing to a dance floor. I was just taking my time, taking it all in, queuing up listening to everyone in front of the door, like getting getting told, yes, I can come in and that kind of, your your heart, your sinking feeling when you finally get in there because this is, people always say it's all well and good. It's what people say, oh, if you get heavy rejected from the burger, it's not a big deal because you always go somewhere else. Yes, you could, right? But you want to go in there, right? So if you, if you get told no, you have to then suddenly start making up other plans and it's like, it, you know, it's just, oh, I was just so happy, man. And you finally get in, you hand close to the cloakroom, even just the cloakroom, you've got all those seats just in front of the cloakroom where people are sitting down and they all look amazing. Everyone's got their great club outfits on and you're just seeing all the people coming out of the toilets from the other side and then you walk in and there's this massive flipping staircase you've got to walk up that just looks amazing and it's just the beat, all the music is thumping in your ear and you just, it's just a, it's sense, there's so much sensory overload in there. It's just hard to really, it's, 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 it's another one, it's a kind of those places where no matter how much, no matter how well you review it, no matter how detailed your review is, nothing's ever going to beat you actually going there yourself. Nothing, nothing. You have to just go and see it with your own eyes. And then all the times you've been you've been rejected, all the times you've heard people say it's been a horrible place and all the weird stories you've heard will suddenly all make sense and all the rejections you, you received in the past will suddenly be worth it. That one occasion you get in. And so far, I've been, always got in when I'm on my own. Right? Um, I've only got, not got in once. I've been with a few group of lads, but... Um, incredible panorama bar's got some new speakers by the way you know previously they had those massive speakers hanging on chains that are kind of facing the monitors are facing sometimes i think the dj in the crowd that these massive monitors hanging are really awesome it's like sort of like um like in a but like in a meat shop right on the butchers where it's all hanging by a massive chunky chain these big speakers but now they have these silver cans these silver little sort of tins that kind of point outwards so that's a kind of a different thing to get used to um in the panorama bar Berk, uh, the Berkheim dance floor is just you forget, you know how, you forget how dark it is in there, man. It's so fucking dark on the main dance floor, but it's so, it's such a weird balance between they get it. It's so dark, but it's really light too. You can see, you know, in front of yourself, you can dance, you can have movement. And there's another thing as well about Burkhine and Panama, bro. It's the only place you go to where you actually get tired and you want to sit down because you're dancing too much. You are dancing, not standing around chatting shit or you know, going to the bar a million times, or going to the toilet a thousand times, you're actually having a good time and having a dance. That's the thing that is honestly one of the, forget all the, you know, the door entry thing and the selection policy and all that malarkey and the cheap drinks and the great lineups and the good licenses. There's something about what they've been able to cultivate or maybe it's just the maturity of the crowd that go to a place like that where they're actually there for the music and they want to dance. It's something you don't get a lot in London in, in general. I think for me personally, the only place where you can see people dancing and having a good time is maybe a bachelor party. 
because it's quite hard to just stand around at a bachelor party, right? Everyone's gonna be whining and dancing. Maybe some Afro beats night would be a quite good one. Some hip hop nights too in London, in London or in the UK are they always go off? People are actually dancing and having a good time. And oddly enough, some indie nights, some like you know, some indie nights you might find in King's Cross and stuff, where people are actually singing along to tracks that they've kind of you know always grown up loving and stuff. But for the most part, apart from that, all the house techno sometimes nights, they're not people are not really dancing. There's a lot of like hanging out. Maybe that's where, maybe maybe that's kind of what the London scene's about. Like, if you've ever seen a London boiler room um, and people aren't really dancing, but they're just hanging out, that's basically what most of our clubs are like um, with that kind of music, with house, techno, deep house, electro. Maybe drum and bass is the only exception I can think of it, where I've been to a drum and bass party and, and actually left and my legs have been aching. Um, but yeah, that was one thing I've just realized. Like, fuck, man, I'm, I'm actually tired. I'm actually knackered. Um, but yeah, I had a great time in the Burkhine. I, I loved it. As you can see, the, the wristband is still on my wrist. Um, great times to be had. Um, loads of cool, amazing people that I managed to bump into. I didn't get my bloody New Rock boots. I ordered a pair of New Rock boots I was going to wear when I went to Burkhine, but they didn't get delivered in time, so I'm pissed off. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm able to wear my Ricks, some Dr. Martins, sleeveless t-shirt, you know, just doing a damn thing there. And yeah, man, it was, it was awesome. I, I, I'm not going to lie. It was fucking awesome. Seeing that when you're walking in, in, the, in at night, or I walked past at night time sorry i was walking around i saw the queue and everything that was a good vibe but coming in the morning and seeing the shadows too is so cool just in the mirror i saw it in the windows like it's sort of like weird window pane kind of covered and when you're in there in the in panorama bar and the light is seeping through it's just it's beautiful man i honestly i just can't say anything there's there's no i can't say any more good words about it man it's one of it's one of my favorite places to go to and i can't wait to get back there again but yeah what a great place um Berghain amazing venue amazing entry place and yeah oh yeah someone had a laboratory t-shirt too um that was awesome um someone had a laboratory t-shirt um this is like this is like the more the more undercover um berlin berkheim associated clubs it's mostly aimed at um gay men for the most part i think there are a lot of fetish nights that go on there someone had a t-shirt of it and merch there that was fucking cool i, w I wish they sold berkheim merch at berkheim which they probably, probably wouldn't because it's not something they'd want to do but that'd be so cool it's a t-shirt with the kind of flyer that they design on there or whatever for the month that'd be super cool I, i'd be so, so down to wear that but yeah um i recommend anyone that is obsessed with club culture as much as i am to go um a great place um again somewhere that i'll easily go back to again i'll probably end up going back there again in november or something I, I know i said i won't go back in the winter but it's just too good of a venue to go to back to not not to go back to again um again yeah so Berghain 2019 holiday was incredible uh, I'm, I'm trying to go every year because you know it's good to kind of get yourself inspired i think the thing is the most thing and also to kind of know where the levels are i think sometimes i can get a little bit too cocky and i can think i'm a little bit better than what i actually am by staying in london right because some of the djs here are a bit shit for the most part um but when you go to berlin or when you go to like when you go see actual big nights out you're like okay cool there's levels to shit even though i think i'm good i'm not as good as these guys these guys are like you know upper echelon stuff and you know i saw miss kitten there as well that was awesome like oh just awesome 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 night i really recommend you check it out if you have opportunity to go of course there's loads of articles out there about how you can get in easily and all that malarkey but as long as you're appreciative of the music you understand the culture you're about you're about having an actual good time in there you're not just there for the fucking hype and you approach it in the right way i'm sure you'll be fine there's also there's some common things you should look out for that you can always google on the internet but you know for the most part i really recommend just at least getting in there once it's so much it's so worth it and again if you don't get in there there is always other options to go to in berlin so it's not like a wasted trip but i really recommend you check it out um again um i know i don't need to sell the burger to anyone on here anyway i'm sure most of my listeners are aware of what that place is um 